Hey, what's up? This is Daniel with day three of our Kingdom Come Lent devotional series. And uh, I want to get started by reading our scripture of the day. And that comes from Matthew 16, 24 through 26. And I'm reading this in the English Standard Version. So here it goes. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? Again, this comes from Matthew 16, 24 through 26. And I think this is the context for which N.T. Wright writes his, um, in his book on earth as in heaven, this section for today, which is called The Cost of Discipleship. And uh, I found this really fascinating, and hopefully um, it gives us some perspective on what this idea of taking up our cross actually means. It says this, When I was growing up, all the local towns and villages had their own war memorials from World War I and II. I knew many families, including my own, who had lost one, two, or more members in these conflicts and solemnly remembered them year after year. In the ancient Galilee, even without stone memorials to the rebels who had died, the towns and villages in Jesus's, in which Jesus announced God's kingdom would have had similar memories of people known, loved, and lost to Roman brutality. When he told his followers to pick up their own cross and follow him, they would not have heard this as a metaphor. So what I'm, what I'm hearing here and what N.T. Wright is saying is that... Um, in those times, like in the time that the Bible was written, there was absolutely um, every family would have been would have been um, would have had some experience with the way the Roman Empire was expanding and how they controlled the region at the time. And I feel kind of similar to that in my childhood. You know, like I was born in Gaza and. I was there until I was eight years old, and so there was no family there that we came in contact with that didn't have a cousin or a brother or um, a sister or one of their aunts or uncles or that wasn't affected physically from the violence that was happening at the time. And so someone I can relate to this, you know, I wasn't around in World War I or World War II, um, like maybe you are if you're watching some of our wonderfully seasoned folks. And so this idea of this cost of discipleship as we kind of make this journey towards Easter in the 40 plus days, I think it's 46, could be wrong, um, 46 days that we're walking us towards the resurrection is, um, we've got to take, I don't know, I feel like I'm called to, when I read the scripture, when I read this little segment from N.T. Wright, I'm reminded and encouraged to hold on to not just the hallelujahs, and that Jesus has done it, but also um, it requires me to really examine what it, what it takes to be a Jesus follower. And for these people, they, when I think when Jesus was calling his disciples, um, that would have meant something. You know, when we hear, take up your cross and follow Jesus, sometimes I don't associate it with, with these kinds of things. I think I associate it very loosely, and not that it would have physical ramifications in my life. And so I think this is a good reminder for me, and hopefully it is for you too, that that Jesus, following Jesus, is not a simple, straightforward, easy, come to church on Sunday thing. In fact, it might cost me something. Um, hopefully my family and I can weather the storm along with Jesus. But if I my focus and my devotion is to following Christ, um, yeah, I have to... I have to really count the cost of what of what that means. So I want to end uh, this short devotion with a prayer for us. And uh, I hope that you're able to reread this scripture and also re-listen re this prayer or write it down somewhere so that you can say it right after you watch this video or potentially even this evening, whenever you watch it. So here's a prayer to end our time. Almighty God, Every time I put my own selfish needs before you, I stumble. I want to deny myself, take up my cross, and push my selfish desires away. 
Help me focus on eternal things, not temporary things. Make me a follower and disciple of you. Amen. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you soon.